We're gonna take a look at the chi-square test. There's two types of chi-square tests we're gonna look at. There's the goodness of fit and there's the test of independence, right? You can understand this perfectly by the end of this video. I promise you the code isn't difficult. The concepts are easy, so stick with me. Booyashaka. This video forms part of a series that I'm doing, right? So we, it's the end-to-end -end process when it comes to analyzing your data. You start off by explore, then clean, then manipulate, describe and summarize, then visualize, then analyze your data, the statistical inference, right? We've done the t-test, the ANOVA, now we're doing the chi-square test. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Now, before we even look at the code, right, let's just first understand what the chi-square test is going to do for us. What question is it trying to answer? Because if you understand the question, it's very easy to then understand the solution or the answers or the results that it gives you. Okay, right. So we've got, let's look at these two graphs that I've popped up on the screen over here. Um, and that you, you can tell that they're, they're similar in shape. On the left-hand side, we've got uh, we've got the proportion of flowers that are small, medium, and large, right? We've got a data set. It's, co it's called the Irish data set. I'm going to show that to you in a second. And we've taken the flowers and we've categorized them as small, medium, and large. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well because that's kind of quite important. But we've got them into categories of small, medium, large. And we also know something about the species. But in the first instance, if we just look at the whole bunch of flowers without looking at their species, and we sort of said we could ask the question, are the, are the proportion of flowers that are small, medium, and large the same, right? And our sample data suggests that they're not looking at that, but could this just be sample? It just could this be, just be coincidence, right? And you know, the way hypothesis testing works is we say, look, to answer this question, we assume that they are equal. Let's assume that all of these flowers are the exact, the, you know, the, the, the proportion of small, medium, and large flowers is equal. If that were true, that's our null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis were true, what is the probability that we would get a sample that showed a difference of this magnitude or more, right? And, and if that probability was extremely small, then we could reject the idea that in actual fact they're all equal and accept the fact that the sample that we have is in fact statistically significant, that we can infer, we can make inference that it is representative of a larger population of flowers, right? Does that make sense? Of course it does, okay, let's keep going. And incidentally, we test that with the chi-squared goodness of fit test, right? And just to reiterate, we always choose the alpha value or the significance level before we do the test. In other words, right, what we've just said is we're going to basically check if the probability of getting a sample of this difference, a sample that has proportions this differently or greater, if the probability of that is extremely small, we'll reject the null hypothesis, right? But what do we mean by extremely? Like, what is our threshold for that? Well, we have to decide that before we do the test. We can't decide it retrospectively because th that would allow us to cheat and we don't want that, right? So before we do the test, we sort of say, well, look, let's take 5%. We could take a different number, but we often use five. Five is quite a common. Five percent. If if the probability of getting a sample with these differences uh, is less five percent or less, then we'll reject the null and accept the fact that this is real. Right? That's how hypothesis testing works. The same principles apply in this next little box where we look at the chi-squared test of independence. Now, for the chi-squared test of independence, right, we're doing something a little bit different. We've got extra information on the table. Right now, not only do we have the flowers divided into small, medium, and large, but we've got what species they were. And we wanna ask the question, is this, th these, are these proportions of small, medium, and large independent of whether what, what the mix of species is? Are these things independent or might one depend on the other? In other words, is knowing the value of one, does that tell us something about the other? Are the proportions of the different species of flowers, and we've got these three species here. They are Setosa, Vericola, and Virginica. They're difficult to pronounce. Are the proportions of them, are they equally distributed across these three categories of small, medium, and large, right? Now, looking at the, the, the diagram, it's clear that that doesn't seem to be the case, but as always, in statistics, it's not just about looking at the graph, but it's about demonstrating statistically that the difference we're seeing is real, okay? So let's keep going. Right, so as always, and I won't bang on about this, but we always use the tidyverse package. It expands the vocabulary within R. If you don't know what it is, watch my video on packages. You've got to use it. Patchwork just helps me kind of get my graphics. It lets me put more than one graphic on a screen at a time. It's really nice. 
Uh, as always, just a reminder, if you push data, open close brackets, you can get a list of the data sets that you have available to you on your computer right now. I try to do all of my teaching using these data sets because it means that you can replicate what it is that I'm doing at home on your computer and that's the best way to learn. So do everything that I'm doing. You've got access to the same data that I do. It's on your computer right now. Right, a data set that we're gonna to use today is Iris. It's, it's basically some flowers. Let's look at what that looks like. Here it is. These are, it's now interestingly, we've got our species over here. And we're going to be looking at, I think we're looking at, at uh, uh, sepal length. This, this, but look at this. These are numbers. These aren't categories. So we, for the sake of this lesson, okay, because we could do an analysis using a, a, a numeric variable, but we're looking at categorical variables now. So can we convert this numeric variable into a categorical variable for the sake of this analysis? And of course, the answer is yes. Let's do that. Okay, so what I am doing here is I've created a new object called flowers. I've assigned to that object everything over here. Okay, so we've started with iris. That's the data that's already on your computer. In the tidyverse, we use these pipe operators and the pipe operator simply means and then. So take this object and pipe it into the next line of code. Now, here's where I cut the data up, this numeric variable, I'm cutting it up. So I, I start with mutate and I'm gonna create a new variable called size. I mean, I could just overwrite sepal length, but let's not. Let's create a new variable called size. Size is equal to, now I'm going to use the function cut, right? What am I going to cut? I'm going to cut sepal length. So I'm taking that variable, I'm going to chop it up. And I've got, it says breaks three, but breaks three really means I, I want that, that, that numeric to be variable to divide it into three equal intervals, right? So it's going to, it's going to chop it up into three equal uh, bunches, right? And then I want it to label them as small, medium, and large, right? It's going to so it's going to take each of the new observations, which which you know the observation will basically just be saying uh, this particular value fell into this range. So we're losing information there, by the way. So this isn't always best practice. We're losing information, but we're taking a particular value, and we're just sort of saying instead of identifying that observation as that value, we just we're saying that observation fits within a particular range. And there'll be three of these ranges, three of these intervals, and we're giving those intervals names, small, medium, and large. Okay. Um, and then I'm saying select. Select just tells us which variables we're going to work with. And we're just going to select species and size. Size is the new variable that we created. Okay, now I push control enter. We've got a new object here called flowers. And if I click on that, we're going to see it pop up over here. We've got species, ba 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 ba, and size, right? Size is the new variable. And you can see that we've got small, medium. And if we go down far enough, we'll find that there's some large as well. There you go. Walla walla. Now, incidentally, we've got our new object called flowers. We can use the table function, say table flowers, and down here, it will arrange the data in such a way that we can see what the counts are with respect to these two different parameters, right? So we've got the species, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica, right? And for each of those, how many of them are small, medium, and large? And we can see just looking at this, right, even before we've done our statistical analysis, that, you know, the distribution of these three species across small and across medium and across large are different. So we're expecting to get a significant, uh, a, 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 a significant test here, but, but wait until you've got an answer. Don't, don't presume anything, right? So let's keep going. Okay, we're gonna start with the, with the, with, uh, the kind of goodness of fit. That's this, this, thing, this question over here. Are these three proportions equal? Okay, uh, the question is, is there st statistically significant difference in the proportion of flowers that are small, medium, and large? using an alpha of 0 0.05, right? That's our significance level, right? Um, goodness of it, the, the null hypothesis is that the proportion of flowers that are small, medium, and large are equal. The alternative hypothesis, so if we can, if our, if our data, if our sample data suggests that we can reject the null, we'll accept the fact that the proportion of flowers that are small, medium, and large are not equal. All right, in other words, what we're seeing in the data is statistically significant, right? So we, we can do it. Now, we're going to do a table of just size because look, in this diagram here, and the question relates just to size, it doesn't relate to species at this point. So just with respect to size, we can see that there are 59 small, 71 medium, and 20 large. The question is, are those, in actual fact, in the population, are they actually equal, right? Is it just a, a matter of random sampling that we landed up with such a big difference? Well, let's answer that question. So to answer that question, we take our new object flowers. We pipe it in 
right, to the next line where we're selecting just size, right? Because if we did the whole data set, it would take size and species into account, and we don't want to do that, right? We're just doing the goodness of fit test. We're just looking at the proportion of size. So let's just select size, pipe that into a table, right? And then pipe that into the chi-squared test, right? Does that make sense? If we, if we didn't pipe it into the chi-squared test, if we stopped there, right, it would basically just do the same thing. It, it would be the same as this line of code here. It would be it would be it would be piping flowers size into table flowers size into table. We're adding in the chi squared test, which would be the same. Okay, and that's going to give us the answer down at the bottom here. Chi squared test, and the answer is a p value of six point six seven three times ten to the power of minus zero seven minus seven. In other words, extremely 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 small. Right. It's very unlikely that if the proportions were equal, that we would get a sample that had as big a difference in proportions as we're seeing or greater, right? So uh, so that's good. So it's statistically significant. Just to go back up to the code over here, right? So we've got flowers. We piped it into select, size, table, chi-square test. This would be the same as doing this. Putting in uh, chi-squared dot, dot test open brackets, close brackets. Okay, and we would, so we'd wrap the chi-square test around the table. I prefer using the pipe operators because it's easier to see what's going on and you can control more of the sort of arguments within each of the, you know, it's just, it's less messy. Okay, got it, let's keep going. All right, so let's just read our, our conclusion here. So the p-value is 0. Pa, 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 very, very small, so that if the proportions, if the proportions were equal, the probability of a, a the sample data providing a difference of this magnitude or more is less than 0 0.05, which is our cutoff, our threshold. Therefore, reject the null that the proportions are equal, and there is evidence that the proportions are not equal, that what we're seeing in the data is statistically significant. Right, let's move on to the chi-squared test of independence. We're cooking with gas now. Right, so now we're, we've gone through this. We've already talked about the fact that the, the null hypothesis is that these variables species and size are the null hypothesis is that they are independent of each other that there's no relationship that knowing the value of one doesn't help us at all predict the value of another right the h1 is that the variables are dependent on each other that there is a difference in proportion between one category and the next um, that there is a relationship that knowing the value of one does help predict the value of the other, right? So we've said that. I'm just reiterating it because if you can understand the null and, and the alternative hypothesis, it makes interpreting the results so much easier. Right. Again, um, we've got table flowers. Now we're not just doing size. We're using the whole of the table. Let's just, let's just go up a step here. Let's, and let's start off with table flowers. And let's just remind ourselves that that table flowers... Okay, let's just remind ourselves that we've got a table here with species and with size, and we've got the account of each of them. And the question is, uh, are the proportions, you know, uh, equal? And let's then we do a chi-squared test of table flowers, and that's going to give us an answer. Again, a very very small small p-value. In other words, if we look at this diagram over here, the probability that we would get a sample with these differences or more is 0.000000000000 not extremely 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 small very unlikely we can reject that idea we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative that there is a difference and that this is statistically significant okay let's look at the code because this is interesting we've done that by 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 saying chi square test and we've wrapped that around the table Okay, so you understand how that works, but we've, we can use the pipe operators in the same way. So we say table, flowers, pipe that into the chi-square test, and of course, voila, same answer. And one step further, we can say flowers, pipe that into table, pipe that into chi-square test, and voila, same same story. Okay, so there's just more than one way to, to do it. Okay, so how do we establish what the expected values are? Super duper easy. Here we go, we've got flowers, right? Put it into into a table, chi-squared test, and then pipe that into dot dollar expected. And, and I'm going to explain exactly what's going on here in just a second. But just to get the statistics right, here we this gives us a table of what the expected values would be. None of them are less than five, so we can say we don't need, need to use the Fisher's exact test. But let's just kind of understand this code over here, right? 
we've got we, we we've piped this model really into this dot dollar expected and how did i get to that well if we had created a new object called my test right and which was what we'd done earlier and my test would some we could type out here my test and that would give us the chi squared test right so we, we can ask for attributes of my test right so you attributes my test in brackets and we can see that my test has all of these attributes in it and we can call any of those attributes with the dollar signs we can say my test attribute one of one of them is uh, expected there it is there dollar sign attribute we can call that and we get this little table of the expected values now so my test dollar sign expected gives us these expected values if we go back up here right all of this represented my test flowers table chi squared that was my test we're piping that into a line of data here a, li a line of code here and the dot says put the output of the code up here that you're piping it put it where the dot is and then a dollar sign and then expect it and if you look at what this is down here my test is the output of all of that above so that's been replaced by the dot the dollar sign expected is what gives us this output right so that's how we got that's how we got to that and that gives us this table with the expected values all of them are above five we don't need to use the fisher's exact test the next video is about simple linear regression if you understand simple linear models you'll understand all of the regression modeling right so watch that video I hope you found that useful. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification for notification of future videos. Share this video with other people if you think they might find it useful. And remember to watch another video, okay? Stay well, don't ever change, don't do drugs, always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care, bye.